We have to keep our composure and stay together. And we've talked a lot about a lot, talked about it a lot, and I think we're ready to do it. Three things must happen tonight for the Irish to upset the pole. One, stop the pole's transition. Two, good shot selection inside. And three, make our foul shots at the end. Can the Irish upset the pole? Stay tuned. We'll find out together. Budweiser, Beachwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This bud's for you. True Value Hardware, more than just a name, it's our way of doing business. And Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold Medicine, fast, effective relief for tough winter colds. This second convocation center on the campus of Notre Dame for the 75th meeting between Notre Dame and DePaul. Hi, everybody. I'm John McConnell along with John Mengelt, all set to bring you one of the biggest basketball games of the year. DePaul, fourth ranked nationally, only once beaten John. They won nine in a row. They're 25 and one against the 17 and seven Irish of Digger Phelps, and they own victories over Carolina and Duke. Yeah, they do, and you know, there's a tremendous dichotomy in this ball game. One team wants to walk it up. The other team doesn't want to walk it off. Comagees, I think, is the key here. Dallas Comagees coming off a career high of 33 points and 10 rebounds in Sunday's victory over Georgia Tech. And his teammate, Rod Strickland, also a career high with 28 points, 8 rebounds, and 9 assists. And for Notre Dame, they have two players back that they've been missing of late. Scott Hicks, who missed the victory at Utah, will be back in the starting lineup tonight. And Sean Connor, their designated shooter, has missed six ball games. He'll be back tonight. Joe, I think one of the most interesting facts of this ball game is the most important part of Notre Dame's defense, I believe, is their offense. They run you, they run you through screens, they, they bunch you up underneath so they can get offensive rebounds, and they don't really let you out to get the easy hoops. The most important part of DePaul's offense is their defense. They play in the lanes, Dallas blocks shots. It allows you, they allow you to take, they hurry your shots, which allows them to get out on the open court and score at least 60 to 70% of their points off a fast break for the secondary quick shots. Well, DePaul trails in this series 43 to 31, but they won game one at the horizon this year, 59-54. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the tip off of tonight's game in just a moment. The Irish fell at the horizon 59 54 in a ball game that saw DePaul blow a 10 point lead with three minutes to go. The Irish led by one going into the final minute of play. And then the Blue Demons hit several clutch free throws in the uh, waning seconds to notch a five point victory. And they have won nine in a row since suffering their only loss of the year to the Georgetown Hoyas. I think you mentioned an important fact there is free throws. Will DePaul revert back to their old style of shooting free throws? Or will they convert to what they've been doing lately? Uh, uh, Strickland is about 19 out of his last 21. Comagees 21 straight. So will they be able to shoot those kind of free throws here with this kind of crowd? Well, they have upped their free throw shooting percentage uh, quite a bit over the last seven or eight games. T. Green, Terrence Green, the sophomore from Flint Central High School in Michigan at 6'4", one forward at 10.9. The banger inside, the 6'9", junior from Jackson, Michigan at 2.8 a game, Kevin and Golden. Center, six, nine, and a senior the center, the senior from Number Philadelphia, Dallas Comagees at 17.5 points, better than 7.5 rebounds, and 93 and block shots on the year. The junior from Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Number 20, the glue Kevin of the club, Edwards. the junior college transfer from Cleveland Heights, Ohio, 6'3", Kevin and Edwards at 14.3 a game. From the Bronx and Rod Strickland, York, lightning rod at 16 and a half points Strickland. with 169 assists on the year. That's almost seven the a game. Coach of the Blue Demons, a 1971 DePaul graduate in his third year, Joey Meyer. Joey Meyer, of course, the coach in his third year for the Blue Demons with 62 wins and, now, and 24 losses coming in here tonight with a 25 record this year. And he's the leading candidate right now for National Coach of the Year honor. You know, we talked about Notre Dame's free throw shooting. I mean, DePaul's free throw shooting. Now we talk about Notre Dame's. Their win advantage is 4.5 points a game, and they've made five more free throws than their opponents each game. It's their strength. Donald Royal, the first member of the Irish named. Mark, Mark Stevenson, Stevenson at 6'6", from Philadelphia Catholic High School at 10.3. Royal at 14, 7, and 6.5 and rebounds a game. Queens Both tops York. on the Irish. The center at 6'9", 250 Close. pounds, a junior from Queens, 
Gary Bose at 4.6 a game and better than six rebounds a contest. Indiana. From Indianapolis, back after a one-game absence with an injured calf, 6'3 senior Scott Picks at 10.7 a game. And the point guard for the Irish, the junior from Jersey City, St. Anthony's High School, David Rivers at 14.2 with 126 assists on the year. And there's a look at Digger, completing his 16th year out of 17 years as a head coach at Notre Dame with 317 career wins. Of course, Digger's already knocked off two biggies here this year, North Carolina and Duke. He's kind of smiling over there. Think he thinks he may have another one in the trap here tonight. Well, they're ranked 24th in the AP rankings and in the CNN at USA Today poll. While the Demons are fourth in the Associated Press rankings this week, fifth in UPI and the CNN polls. Of course, Temple's loss last night, coupled with the win here, would probably move DePaul up considerably, and Indiana plays Purdue. Who knows what will happen there? So DePaul could jump two rankings this week with a victory here tonight. That's right. Purdue and Indiana tomorrow night at West Lafayette for at least a share of the Big Ten lead if the Boilermakers win, and an outright title for the Hoosiers if they can sweep Purdue with their second victory of the year over the Boilermakers tomorrow night. There was a look at the series between these two Midwestern independents. Notre Dame owning a 43-31 edge. Mike Sanzars, Steve Welmer, and Randy Drury, all from the Mid-America Conference, our officials here at South Bend tonight. The Irish have won four in a row, DePaul nine in a row. All set to go. The Irish in the home white, DePaul in the road blues. Steve Welmer, himself a former player at Evansville, tosses up the ball and DePaul gets it. T. Green underneath lays it up and in with a spinning drive and the Demons on the board quickly. Well, DePaul, as usual, very aggressive from the tip. They'll play that way the whole game. Pressure on defense. They want the tempo to be upbeat. DePaul coming off a big 17-point win over Georgia Tech Sunday afternoon at the horizon. David Rivers, baseline jumper over Strickland. He ties the score at two. Rodney Strickland. Not the most fundamental defensive player in the country. Makes up a lot for his quickness. That's an awful quick shot, I think. I think he was surprised that Rivers put it up that quickly. I was kind of surprised, too, the way <laughs> Notre Dame has walked the ball offensively most of the time this year. Who knows what Digger's got up his sleeve tonight. I think Joey, though, will go with the old standby of pressure defense and running it up and down the floor. Notre Dame 11 and 3 here. The one of their three losses here at the Athletic and Convocation Center was to West Virginia, the same team that beat Temple last night. They got the ball underneath the Dallas Comages. He missed the money and then is over the back for the foul. Comages missed an easy three-footer and then paid the price with a foul on the rebound. A lot of times when a player misses a fairly easy shot, he gets anxious and compounds that mistake with a foul. Dallas opened a nice pass from Strickland and had an easy shot, even if he could have put it on the floor, but there's the foul. Rivers out front to Vos. Right side to Royal. Rivers guided by Strickland. Now to Royal, one on one on Golden. Reverse dribble drive gives off to Rivers. David in and out from 15. Homage with a rebound. Out the pass. Edwards caught up with it. Baseline right. And T. Green to the basket. Rolls it in. His second early basket. And the ball leads four to two. Four on two break. The Demons very patient, just waited for all the lanes to be filled. Converted fairly easily. Two quick baskets for Terrence Green, averaging just under 11 points a game. Notre Dame now in their patented slowdown offense. Royal right side to Mark Stevenson deep in the baseline corner. A pivoting jump shot. Fires the score over Strickland, and we're even at four. I think Digger himself may be surprised at both of those shots. That one taken with 23 seconds on the clock. The first one taken by Rivers with about 26 seconds. That's a walk. And travel against the Blue Demon. He did. He juggled the ball just a little bit when he got it. Didn't have control and walked. No problem, though. The Blue Demons are going to turn it over, but they're also going to convert a lot of that guy. A look at Digger Phelps record. Here in his 16th year at the helm of the Irish. David Rivers walking it up against Rod Strickland, two of the best point guards in the country. Two on two game on the right side of the floor, Vos and Rivers. He wanted to go inside to Vos, but Vos didn't make that move. Instead, Royal does, rims it out, 
Kevin Golden with a rebound for the Blue Demon. There's an example. Kamaji's not a block shot, but he really bothered Royal, made him change that shot, caused the miss. Dallas in the top five in rejections with 93 this year, and he's averaged almost five a game in the last six games. Strickland away with a dribble, a jumper, in and out, tipped by Golden a bit short, and we got a crashing foul called against Kevin Golden at DePaul, the second team foul against DePaul, the first against Golden. DePaul hitting the boards very strong here. One of the things they have to be very careful of is foul trouble. They do not want to let the Irish into the bonus. The Irish 75% from the free throw line, pretty good free throw shooting team. Notre Dame ranking ninth nationally at the free throw stripe. They're third in defense, giving up only 59 points a game. Rivers checked by Comagies on a switch. They give it out front now to Stevenson. Works into the paint. Off balance pass. Grabbed by Bose. Rivers to Stevenson. 15 foot jumper. And he got the roll. The bounce off the rim hit the glass and down through to give Notre Dame their first lead of the game at 6 to 4. Good penetration by Rivers. DePaul double teaming. Rivers as he comes off that early screen and almost shifting into a zone on the weak side. Four points for Stevenson. Jumper by Strickland. And out. Rebound. Scott Hicks. He can sky for a 6-3 guard. Averaging almost five rebounds a game. He's got a guy on him that can sky 6-4. Kevin Edwards. So that'll be a good matchup. Rivers left side to Royal. Now to Stevenson. Right side Hicks. Guided by Edwards. Looking baseline for Royal. But Golden covers him. Rivers works by the high post pick. Set up by both. Bose goes inside to Royal. The ball is kicked by DePaul. Notre Dame will get it, and they'll reset the shot clock here. I think it's very important that Dallas Comagies not get another quick foul as far as DePaul is concerned. Let's see if Notre Dame tries to go down low to Vose, maybe to draw that foul. Baseline right, David Rivers will inbound for the Irish. Notre Dame leads 6-4. to four. Shallow pass inside to Royal. And knocks in an eight-foot jumper from the right side. Notre Dame now up by four at eight to four. Definite mental lapse for the Blue Demons. They were in a zone that time. Just got caught asleep. Notre Dame has the score doubled early. Closing in on the 16-minute mark. There's a lot baseline left to Comagies. And a hold called against the Irish. The first team foul whistled against Notre Dame. And it's against Harry Bose. Digger politicking for a push-off, as you see him there. Discussing that with both referees kind of vehemently. He thought Dallas pushed off just a little bit. They shook their head. Yes, the hold was before the push. Golden tries to go inside with the inbounds bounce pass, and it's picked off by Gary Vos, and the Irish bring it up, leading 8-4. to four. Another mental lapse for DePaul. Stevenson. Working on T. Green fadeaway jumper, and he's hit three in a row, and Notre Dame leads it 10 to 4. Tough shot by Stevenson. He has an inch or two on Green. They might try to take advantage of that, but his shots have been pretty tough ones so far. One of the better starts offensively I've seen the Irish come up with all year. Comedy's underneath the goal and ball tipped away, but it's touched last by Scott Hicks. Gets out of bounds to DePaul. And with 15-26 left to go here in the first half at Notre Dame, a timeout is called. The Irish leading the Blue Demons 10-4. Notre Dame, 5 of 7 from the floor. Mark Stevenson with 3 out of 3. Each club with 3 rebounds. Terrence Green has both DePaul baskets, and the Demons have not scored since the 1852 mark. DePaul, 2 of 6. But they get off to a slow shooting start Sunday in their victory over Georgia Tech. They were 1 out of 13 before they knocked the lid off. Very quick start for the Irish. They're taking quick shots, much quicker than they usually do offensively. A surprise. Inside pass, Kevin Golden banks in a 5-footer from the left angle, and that's just about his game average right there. Joey probably feels that the Irish are going to help a lot off on Kamaji, Strickland, and Edwards. Going to leave Golden just just a little bit of room to shoot. Kevin's got to stick him. Nice inbounds play by DePaul. 10-6 Notre Dame. 15 minutes to go here in the first half at South Bend. Stevenson out high. A little wrinkle here by Digger. A little small short figure eight out front. Going to try to spread DePaul out just a little bit. Royal top of the circle. That's where you want him. He draws Golden in the air. Leans inside for the jumper. Can't get it. Strickland. Can't get the rebound. Royal does. Misses short. Got his own rebound. Back and scores on the third effort. 12-6 Notre Dame. Good effort by Royal, but contribute some of that to Kamaji's 
intelligent enough to not try to slap at the ball and get his second foul. He's going to wait a while before he gets aggressive. Four points for Royal. Baseline right. Comedies oh. around post. Missed easy shot. That's his second easy miss. And the ball's batted out where Hicks brings it down for the Irish. Works through the lane. Scoots and scores with the left hand. And it's 14 to 6. Notre Dame with an early eight point lead. The Irish attacking offensively. Much, much more than we've seen them so far this season. Taking it right to DePaul at their own game. Strickland, top of the circle, down the left side. High Archer off the rim to the right. He drew the foul on Scott Hicks. That looked like a rainbow when he let that pat the jumper go. And that's foul number one on Hicks, too, against Notre Dame. Rodney forced his first shot and really kind of forced that one. Hicks kind of bailed him out. Rodney off to a slow start. Maybe feels some pressure to do something offensively here. And Joey. Makes a couple of changes. Stanley Brundy, the 6'6 sophomore from Los Angeles at 8.4 and better than seven rebounds a game. Checks in, hopefully, to give DePaul a lift off the bench. And the junior co-captain, the outside shooter, Andy Lox, checks in at 4.6 a game, the leading three-point gunner for the Demons. And look at Strickland ribbing out the first free throw after making 38 of his last 48. I'll tell you what, DePaul looks a little tight. Common G's a little short on his first couple of shots. Of course, he admitted to being nervous against Georgia Tech and Strickland a little bit of force. Sometimes when you get tight, you force him. 14-7 to Paul. Rivers handled the press. Now backs it out front as the Irish set up the offense. Strickland one of two at the strike. Fox guarding uh, Mark Stevenson. Royal out high, not a Rivers. Royal works into the free throw lane. Bad pass, and they're going to call a foul on Stevenson. That is foul number one on uh, Rod Strickland, rather, and uh, number three against DePaul. Not much of a foul there, John, that I could see. It looked like uh, Royal Red Rivers going the wrong way. It simply threw it away. DePaul into a 2-3 zone. Obviously, when the ball's taken out on their defensive end of the floor. Nice pass inside to Royal. Baseline. Bose lays it in. Nice baseline move and both with his first basket a nine point Notre Dame lead 16 to 7. Two easy hoops against DePaul zone. Underneath Rundy hard off the glass he threw that one up way too hard. This is Notre Dame's best offensive start in any game I can remember this year John. Well, they're going much more aggressive than usual they're taking quicker shots. Not running the clock down as they go into this little short weave out front. Stevenson baseline to Hicks. He throws up an air ball from 16 feet. The ball tapped by Brundy to Strickland. Lightning rod in the middle three on three. Nice pass. Strickland passes off the dribble to Edwards and a fadeaway bank shot to the left side goes in. Nice pass from Strickland. Brundy bobbled the ball just a little bit. Had an easy layup after the bobble had to release to Edwards. That's what the Demons want to do. Run it up and down. 16 and nine Notre Dame. Rivers out front pressured by Strickland defensively works it to the left edge inside pass to Bose and there's a charge I believe on Bose. Gary Bose with a second foul trying to draw the second foul against Comages and went the other way. This was probably from Digger's orders. Let's go low on Comages. Last time Royal got a rebound he hunted for Comages to take it up and at him. Dallas with good position draws the offensive foul. 16 to 9 Notre Dame as Strickland walks the dribble across the time strike for the DePaul Blue Demons. Demons right side to Laux. Demons should go to Dallas right now. They do inside. Comedies off the glass and in. Dallas's first deuce of the game. That cuts the Irish lead to five at 16 11. Gary Vos now really has to play aggressive defense when Dallas does not have the ball. Do not let him have position. Rivers one on one on Strickland. They try to pick him off with Royals pick. Donald gets the ball to the free throw line and walked before he started his move. 15, 11, 55 left to go in the first half here in South Bend, Indiana, the home of the Irish. Notre Dame leading to Paul with a timeout here, 16 to 11. Jimmy, what about those generals? They actually thought there was going to be this last week. Okay. Oh. Yeah, we're happier with us tonight. One of the premier attractions of the year. Notre Dame and DePaul. The Irish off to a quick start here in South Bend tonight, leading by five after leading by nine earlier. You're right, and quick start is the right word. They're bringing the ball up the floor much more quickly than they have in the past, shooting some quick shots, and I think that quick transition game got them in a little bit of trouble. An air ball from Hicks. 
and a walk from Royal. Well, the Irish with a 7-4 edge off the boards, and they have outshot DePaul, 8 of 13 from the floor to 5 of 10 for the Blue Demons. Rick Wooden left side to Edwards. High to Brundy, right side to Laos. Baseline, Comedy backs in on both. Fall away, four-footer won't go. Tipped in by Edwards with a left hand. Well, there's a guy who can do it all. Very quiet player, and you look up, but he's got 18 to 20 points, seven or eight rebounds, right. and a handful of assists. That's and, the kind of player Edwards is. And very, very few turnovers. Oh, great pass. Slam jam off the feet from Rivers. Mark Stevenson with eight. Somebody lost their man there. Back pick that time by Royal for Stevenson. Andy Lauk got left, and nobody helped him out. Eight points for Mark Stevenson, the Irish leading 18-13. Golden to check back in in a moment for the Blue Demons. Comedies takes a baseline left up to the jumper, and it catches the rim and rattles in over Vos, and that's four points for Comedies. Well, they're going to Comedies every time now. Vos with two fouls, not wanting to draw his third. T. Green will also check back in when time allows for Joey Meyer and the Blue Demons. He rotates his seven players. Vos jumper from the left side, rims out. Rebound Edwards wants to run. Veers it down the left side. Well, they will run. Brundy out front the Laux. He turns it inside walk. to Comedies. A walk on Dallas. Scott See? Haddock, a 6'9 freshman from Plantation, Florida, number 43, checks in for Notre Dame. And Green and Golden both back in for DePaul, replacing Brundy and Rod Strickland. Even though DePaul did not get a shot off the original break, they still had the Irish in a little bit of transitional defense. Not really up tight on their man. They got the quick shot, but Dallas mistake kind of negated the shot they got. 18-15 Irish. Rivers in low, and we got a whistle. An offensive foul called on Royal. Donald Royal's first foul, the fourth against the Irish. That's the second offensive call against Notre Dame in the first half. Golden down low on defense. Royal initiated the contact. Looked like I think the lean is what got him in trouble, not necessarily the position of Golden. 18-15 Irish, the ball walking the dribble up in the form of Kevin Edwards. Out front to Laux. Left side, Comagies. Baseline over Paddock. Score it! Nice soft touch from 12 feet away. Baseline left. Six points for Comagies. And DePaul down by nine early, now trailing by just one. I don't think Paddock could have played any better defense. He was right up in under Dallas. Even a bump could have been called a foul. Nothing. Rivers looking underneath. Nothing there. Royal swings it left side to Stevenson. Halfway through the first half here at Notre Dame. The Irish leading by one. Hicks travel. Oh, they're going to call a foul on Kevin Edwards. I Hicks might have. Uh, no, I think it's Golden. Uh, yeah, Golden, I meant to say. That's two on Kevin, and it's four against DePaul, and uh, the fouls are even at four feet. And here comes Joe Frederick, who got his first start. The freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio, got his first start at Utah. Came up with seven big points, replacing Scotty Hicks. Frederick, 1.7 on the year, but he has scored 19 points in the last five games. Two zones, two easy hoops for the Irish. DePaul needs to tighten up that zone just a little. Rivers, right side Stevenson, inside pass. Royal knocked down, gets the ball to Scott Paddock, who kicks it out of bounds. There's the quick hands of Kevin Edwards. They tried to put the ball to Royal. Kevin gets his hand on the ball. Right there, causes the problem. And there it is, Paddock can't get his hand on it. Notre Dame by one. 9.15 to go in the half. Edwards one-on-one -on, -one on the right side against David Rivers. Comedy's baseline right. Green fumbles it back to Comedy. Traveling on the exchange between Comedy's and Edwards. Good pressure from the Irish. Notre Dame with the ball back, leading by one. Now Strickland checking back in for the Blue Demons. And Kevin Edwards will sit down for his first breather. For using only seven players, Joey does a great job of rotating them and keeping them fresh most of the time. Now he keeps an eye on them. Some guys don't like to come in and out of the game very much that quickly, but he's been getting away with it so far this year. Rivers to Stevenson. Mark with eight points, swings into the lane, pull up jumper, in and out, won't go. And a great rebound by Golden, who falling down gets it away to Strickland. Lightning ride through the left side of the paint. Out front, Comagies. Starts to move. Jump switch by Royal. 
Green in long against Rivers. It's the corner of the glass. And travel on the play. I think he just called it hit underneath the backboard. I guess it did. Uh, they called it out of bounds. Turnover. Looked like this might have been an offensive foul. Green really trying to force his way in there. Up behind the basket. Hits the brace. That's out of bounds. Note their damn ball. Yeah, it looked like he might have charged on the play. Especially if called three or four charges on Notre Dame, you think he might get one in return. And there's a reach on Strickland, and that is Rodney's second foul as he reached in and grabbed the left wrist of Donald Royal. Rodney's off to a slow start, a little frustrated. He's got to get down a little bit lower and play a little sounder fundamental defense instead of trying to use his quickness all the time. He's got great hands and reaches and gets a lot of those, but if he just backs up in there, he'll cause the people not to penetrate in that area. Fifth team foul against DePaul, the second on Strickland. Nice pass inside River to Royal. And muzzles it up and in for his sixth point. Notre Dame leading 20 to 17. Dallas a little lax again on defense, worrying about his second foul. I think now with eight minutes to go, he needs to dig in. Louts out front to Golden. And we got a hold on Scott Paddock. Here comes Sean Connor. Scott Hicks into the Notre Dame lineup. They're the two players that have been injured of late. And we've got a timeout here with 7.57 left to go in the first half. Notre Dame leads DePaul 20 17. <laughs> here at the AC Center on the campus of Notre Dame. Digger talking with his troops. Notre Dame 59% on 10 of 17 so far and an 8 7 edge off the boards. DePaul shooting 60%. The Blue Demons 9 of 15 and 1 of 2 at the strike. DePaul with five fouls. Two more will put Notre Dame in the bonus. Notre Dame with four. Looks like both teams defensively are kind of trying not to foul. There was a lot of quick fouls caught early. Made him conscious of it. Edwards raises up long jumper. Yes, out of the left corner. As is nothing but net on a 16-foot fadeaway jumper. And Edwards with six points now in the game makes it a one-point Notre Dame lead. A lot of times those fadeaways look like three-pointers because guys end up six, eight feet behind where they shot it. That was for two. Hicks pressure gives out front to Royal. Left side, Joe Frederick, the freshman from Cincinnati. Going to be a fine player. Hicks guarded by Edwards. Connor sets the pick as he swings it to the left side. Another DePaul with super defense, really intense overflight. Edwards got that cross court corner to corner pass from Royal and a block by Collegees, uh, his first of the game. And uh, fabulous block. He blocked that ball right to Lau. He looked at him, tipped the ball right to him. Yeah, that's a, what Dallas does as well as anybody. When he blocks a shot, more often than not, DePaul puts it in play for a break. Hicks, pull up, move, and missed the shot off to the left. Connor can't hold the rebound. T. Green comes out of there with it. Sean Connor on the deflection. The Irish, three on one, can't convert. Couldn't make it. Hicks with a nice hesitation move there right at the free throw line. Missed the easy shot, and then the Irish couldn't contain the rebound. Left side, Green to Edwards, another long jumper. This time it goes long to the right, and Royal saves it in the corner for the Irish. That time, Edwards didn't really have his feet. I think where he'd like to have him shot a little quick. 20 to 19, Notre Dame with six and a half to go in the first half. Hicks out front working one on one against Kevin Edwards. I'm sure the Irish offense is going to suffer just a little bit without David Rivers in there guiding it. I think I'm going to give him a blow. Well, they may have found another player though when Scott Hicks went out and with Connor's absence with uh, Joe Frederick getting improved play time. Three point shot, Sean Connor misses. Rebound, Comagees. Connor, 12 of 31 now from three point territory to lead the Irish. They don't shoot many three pointers and uh, nobody really other than Lauchs has shot many for DePaul although Edwards is 13 of 25. DePaul though has front. a 47% now from three point. Yeah they, they, they missed most of theirs in and out. Comedy's missed the 12 foot turnaround. Paddock with a rebound for the Irish. DePaul can get to the, to the rim but they can't get over the, uh, the peak here as they still trail by one. Hicks left side on Edwards. Nice baseline pass to Frederick gives it back to Hicks. I don't think that's really a want to get Frederick the ball posting up down there. Connor open from the right side shoots over Louts off the heel of the rim. Comagees backs away for the rebound knocked out of bounds and it goes to DePaul. I think the case there was the officials might have felt they missed a foul. Looked like Comagees definitely knocked this ball out of bounds. Connor's shooting again long. You see Dallas hit the ball, maybe a little foul there, a little grab on the arm, so the referee says, hey, what the heck, I'll give him the ball instead of a foul. 
Digger putting Rivers. Stevenson and Vos back in the Irish lineup along with Connor who stays in there and Donald Royal. It's going to give Connor a little time to get back into the ball game into the flow of things. He's been out a long time. The toughest thing to get back is a shooting touch. Nice pass. Push inside. off. And yes, sir. They call it. That's two on Comages. And that's six against DePaul. That's definitely a foul. 20 to 19. Notre Dame still with that one point lead. Dallas has got to learn to push off maybe with his elbow instead of that hand. When you extend that hand way out, easy vision for the referee to see that one. Rivers walking it up against Edwards. Rundy will check back in along with Strickland in a moment for the ball. Royal baseline right up, but a little eight footer wouldn't go. Here's a three on one break. Laux ahead to Edwards. Left side, T Green underneath, and traveled up, oh, holding call on Rivers. Well, he got inside David, and David reached. And that is foul number five on Notre Dame. Well, I know you can't do anything about it. I wish there's some rule they could do something about this. Rivers grabs the arm almost intentionally. You can't call an intentional foul. I mean, this is what the guy's got to do. Everybody knows he's got inside position. He makes an attempt to get the ball, but he can't get it, so he grabs his arm. Three on one, nothing but the ball out of bounds. Oh, nice. Double pump in midair at a baseline jumper by Strickland on the inbounds pass, and he puts the ball ahead. 21-20, Rod's first field goal of the night, given three points. A little dipsy doodle might wake Rod up. He struggled so far here in the first half. Only our second lead change. Notre Dame led almost all the way. Royal out front. Sean Connor from three-point territory, just off the front of the rim, follows his own rebound. Oh, T. Green didn't block out that time. And the ball kicked out of bounds underneath the Irish basket. It'll still be Notre Dame ball. 21 20 to Paul, 4 26 left to play in the first half. As a player, you got to realize when those three pointers are taken, the rebounds are going to come longer. T. Green trying to sneak out on the break, did not box out, allowed the Irish to get the rebound. Connor overdue has missed two three pointers and a two point attempt now. He's put up three shots since he checked in, has yet to, to bury one. Stevenson left side, cross court, Connor in the right corner, deep in the well, underneath the Vos. Connor both playing a two man game. Left handed reverse. Right off the glass and then Notre Dame leads by one. Irish want to go down low. Kamaji's on the bench. One of the best shot blockers in the league on the bench. You got to go low. Third lead change. Irish by one. 22 21. T Green into the lane. Pull up eight footer. Off the glass and in. And DePaul regains the lead. 23 22. Six for Terrence Green. That's one shot I'd bet was intentionally banked off the glass. Yeah. Green got up, had a hand in his face. Went up with it just a little bit higher, up off the glass. DePaul now in a 3-2 zone. Pass picked off by Brundy. Stanley ahead to Lightning Rod Strickland. Right side, T. Green works around both, lays it up and in with the right angle. DePaul by three on the fourth basket of the first half by Terrence Green. One of the things you have when you rush the ball up the floor and get good position, you get the ball in the wing, you got guys running at you. It's a lot easier to go around them when you have them running at you. That's what happened with T. Green that time. Eight first half points for Terrence Green, who had the first four of the game for DePaul, and DePaul leads by three. Baseline jumper, Mark Stevenson, long off to the right. Royal battles Edwards for the rebound and draws the foul on Kevin. That's his first. That is the 17th foul on DePaul now, which means that Notre Dame will be in the one and one. There's the play right here, right in front of him, on the arm. The ball came off long, just barely grazed the rim. Edwards had good position, had the ball hit the rim properly, but when it grazed across, it went out a lot farther. Royal got the ball, and Edwards on the reach. 3-0-3 to go in the half. The bonus in effect now for the Irish. Scott Hicks has checked back in for Notre Dame. Donald Royal, an 80 percenter on 124 out of 155. Knocks in his first preview of the game. The first free throw attempted by the Irish tonight. And as John mentioned, they're in the top 10 nationally with a 75 percent shooting percentage as a club. Very good. Royal now attempting to make it two straight at the stripe in his eighth first half point. He does. And a timeout. 3 0 3 to go. First half, DePaul 25, Notre Dame 24. Well, spring's in the air already, and of course, Arnie's going to be leaving for Arizona, and want to wish him the best. And uh, you see, they're going to broadcast there Sunday, March 8th, 2 p.m. Brewers and the Cubs. What's the star for? I don't know. Maybe it's for Arnie. It's for Arnie's four Emmys in broadcasting baseball. And I want to wish him the best out there. As 
Hopefully I'll get another Emmy this year and a better suntan out in Arizona. And a better ball club. Yeah. Cubs will try to rebound from that year a year ago. Cubs to Brewers on the eighth and then our DePaul special that night at 10 o'clock. Strickland beautiful over the shoulder pass and Kevin Golden by missed Brundle. the layup and Brundy tipped it in. Golden was surprised I think and I was surprised the Irish full court zone press kind of puts DePaul in the kind of game they want to be in and Strickland just accelerated the ball up the floor had a two on one caught. Stevenson Royal left side Scott Hicks back to Stevenson pull up eight footer off the heel of the rim Terrence Green has it tipped away and Gary Bosa the great job of saving it another rebound for DePaul the Demons now have a 14 13 lead off the boards so the battle of the boards about even here Stevenson out front to Hicks left side Rivers good hands by Brundy DePaul shooting 67 percent John they've made two out of every three. 14 of 21 the Irish now 11 of 25 only 44 percent. You should think of forwards being slow Brundy has quick hands 32 steals on the year. He gets in that passing lane. Yeah he is quick. Walk. And Royal in the paint took the step before he dished it off into the left corner and that turnover gives it back to the Blue Demons leading it by three. Irish decide not to pick up full court this time. 2 11 to go here in the first half in South Bend, Indiana, the home of the Irish. DePaul leading by three after trailing by nine early. Interesting move, Hicks on Strickland. Rivers on Edwards. Might be a post up opportunity for Edwards. Terrence Green, left side in the corner to Strickland. Works into the area. Off balance jumper, right side off the rim, and Gary Bolts with a rebound. They tried to post up Edwards that time. Golden came over and kind of got in the way. He's got to realize when they've got a mismatch to stay out of there. Scott Hicks, left side, David Rivers. Two point shot, had his foot on the line, in and out. Slapped off the glass, back to Royal who lays it in. Ten first half points for Donna Royal, and it's a one point to Paul Lee. Ball came off right to Golden and Strickland, and both kind of wrestled for it, knocked it back up, and Royal's right there at the right place. A little garbage. Yeah. All looks the same in the paper next day. Edwards. Out of Strickland. Rod looks to be a little bit frustrated here tonight. Offensively, hasn't found his rhythm yet. Inside to Brundy off the glass and in. A twisting turnaround six footer. Brundy Stanley with four. Shooting 54% on the year. Gets a lot of tip ins, a lot of bunnies. Got that one up off the glass. 10 seconds difference between the shot clock. And the game clock. 44 seconds to go in the half. Stevenson checked along the baseline out front to Rivers. Drives down the left side. Cross court pass. Stevenson around his man. Jack Nice put it up off balance. Ball knocked out. Where Strickland had it. Bumble right through his legs and they tied up loose on the floor. The ball will go to Notre Dame on the alternate possession with 31 seconds to go. The Irish can work for the last shot here. And here comes Joe Frederick and Sean Connor. A couple of perimeter players in. Andy Louts likewise for Joey Meyer and DePaul. Now Digger knows he's going to take the last shot. At least he hopes his players do. Puts two bombers in. Takes both out so he does not get his third foul. Good move by Digger Phelps. And with Louts in there, DePaul with their shooters. And of course Joey knowing he's not going to get the ball offensively again takes Strickland out. Yep. Not wanting him to get his third foul. Right. Strickland and Kamaji's both on the bench with two fouls. Cross court pass. Red oh, quick Rivers. shot. Inside. And Stevenson lays it in. He's got 10 and draws the foul. They could tie the score. Mark Stevenson with a lamp on the left side and the foul. Goes against Brundy. The Irish could have run the clock down. There you see it. Plenty of time. They go at it quickly. Fooled me and maybe fooled DePaul. Got a chance to tie it. Five assists here in the first half for David Rivers, who came in with 126 on the year. Mark Stevenson shooting 78% on at 53 of 68. Will be at the stripe to try for the tie here. He has 10 first half points on five field goals. And Strickland. Another rule I really don't understand. Yeah. Everybody in the world knows he's going in the ball game. Another kind of bureaucratic army like rule where you got to go down and stand in front of the score. Where else is it going? <laughs> well, they could have called a technical oh, foul. Oh, definitely could have called a technical foul according to the rule. Stevenson's freebie is good. He's got 11 first half points. He and Royal have 21 between them. And the Irish have battled back to tie. That's our third tie of the ball game. 
This one at 29 with 15 seconds to go in the first half. DePaul will work for the last shot. Rivers tied for the steal. Edwards inside, pull up 12 footer. Off the heel of the rim. Long rebound, blocked by Edwards. Ball batted up in the air. The Irish would have had a bunny there. Knocked it about. Notre Dame gets it with two seconds to go, but a great defensive play by Edwards. Otherwise, Rivers would have been away for the go ahead layup. Looks like football platooning here. Here comes Connor and Frederick back in. Also, Lauchs for the same people that came in for four. Two seconds to go on the clock. The Irish put it inbound. Backcourt. They get it in. Bose will throw it up from three point range. Off the front of the rim. It was Stevenson. And Stevenson came very close to knocking in a three point shot at the horn. He thought he was fouled. Digger Phelps thought he was fouled. They didn't call it. And so, after 20 minutes of play, as Digger goes after the referee, let's take a look and see if there was arm contact there. You got the whistle. Well, kind of tough to see all the way across there. Digger, Digger, all right. Digger really working on the officials here as the two clubs have gone down to the locker room. But at halftime, we're all even. Terrence Green with eight points, delayed to Paul, followed by Comages and Edwards with six apiece, while Stevenson with 11, Royal with 10, lead Notre Dame in scoring, and we're all tied here at halftime. DePaul 29, Notre Dame 29. We'll be back with our halftime show, leading off with Coach Digger Phelps in just a moment. Of course, with me, as always, is the coach of the Fighting Irish, Digger Phelps. And Digger, it's close to the tournament time. Everybody's kind of talking who's going where, who may get in, who may not. Do you think the NCAA weighs heavier on wins toward the end of the season than they do midseason or the beginning of the season? Well, I think last year you take a look at the Blue Demons. They were 16 and 12 and struggled really at the end. They had some losses, but the key game was when they upset Marquette and that put them in it. I think the strength of scheduling means a lot anymore. I don't think it's winning streaks or losing streaks. It's who you're playing against when you're playing them. And I think that has a lot to do with who goes. I don't think there's enough emphasis in, in my opinion on a season record. I I really believe that that we ought to try to keep teams who play very well during the season closer to home so their fans can go and obviously have at least some semblance of a home court advantage. Yes and no. I think it works for you. It works against you. If I take a look at what goes on now with uh, uh, DePaul playing at home I, I think that's going to be good for them playing at the horizon. I'm sure they're going to be there. I'd be disappointed if they weren't. I'm sure a lot of people in Chicago will be too. But um, take as an example UCLA and Pauley Pavilion. Uh, what goes on there is a Pac-10 tournament. That's going to help them get ready no matter where they end up going. I think that really helps when you're playing a conference tournament at home. Maybe more than what goes on the first and second round because you want to get in. I think UCLA is one of those teams once they get in they can catch on fire. Uh, another team out west I really like in the whack is Brigham Young. I don't think people realize when they're shooting the ball they can play against anybody. They had a big showdown game at Wyoming last weekend pulled it off. It was a must win and that's what's important. Are you hot the last two weeks of the season and that type of team can bother you. But when you take a look at who's going to get there on paper it's obvious right now North Carolina Kenny Smith's healthy when they go they're as good as anybody because they're deep. When you take a look at Indiana, they're proven now that they're going to win the Big Ten, be the strength of the Big Ten. But yet a team like Illinois could surprise people and end up, as we saw last year, DePaul end up in a regional where they're one of the final 16. Yet the Blue Demons, from that, what I like about them is the fact they have a lot of confidence right now. Uh, they blew out Georgia Tech. They got a key game tonight with, uh, with the Irish, and they finish up with Marquette. It uh, doesn't matter what happens in the last two games with them because it's going to carry over into the season because there's no pressure on them this year. And of course when I take a look at Nevada Las Vegas uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see Tark to make it to the final four and uh, their team has been proven all year that they can compete against the best of the rest really impressed me last week when they came back from 19 down at half to win by 11 on the road. How about some sleepers you know there's a lot of a lot of vying for position at the end teams that squeak in like DePaul did and end up in the final 16 who knows who are some of your sleepers around that may be better than their reputation. Well, I think a lot's going to determine that by playoff conference time. I think in the Pac-10 you could see a team like Arizona State who's been hot the last two weeks even though they got a losing record. If they win or get in the championship game they could end up going to the NCAA tournaments because they are hot. That could get them in there. In the Atlantic Coast Conference who knows what could happen with a team like Virginia who's been sitting there all year long. Georgia Tech who played poorly against the Paul but had the big upset against Duke. Those two teams could be surprised of the ACC. And finally I like in the Big East uh, everybody talks about St. John's or Georgetown or uh, you know even Syracuse Providence could be the dark horse coming out of there this year. That's one of those teams that can impress people where all of a sudden they're hot. Nobody expects them to do anything. They win the first two games. Next thing you know they're in a regional where anything can happen. 
Every year we've been expanding the NCAA. Uh, we talked uh, 32 teams, 64 teams. Why not 209? Why not everybody? I, I mean, why do we play the season? Well, that's true. I, I think it's like the NBA playoffs. You know, you play a whole season and eliminate <laughs> six, seven season. teams, right? And then you go back again. But more importantly, I, I just look at it this way. Uh, the 64 will be the limit they'll go. That gets it back to 32. That's the number, 32. Someday I'd love to see and test a three-weekend double elimination tournament by putting eight teams in each region, 32 teams all together, and see what comes out of that to go to the Final Four. That would be an exciting playoff because that goes on in every sport except for professional football. It goes on in baseball, it goes on in basketball, and I think we're ready for that in college basketball. You think Notre Dame's in the tournament? Do you think you're going to telecast this game tonight? <laughs> Yes, thanks a lot for being with us at half as usual. You're great. And I'll be back with Joey right after this. Perhaps you've noticed that WXRT listeners can be rather fanatical about their radio station preference. It's quite remarkable length they'll go to to... ...tonight, and that'll be a home encounter on the national tube on March 7th against Marquette to Paul 4 0 against the great four independents with the best overall record of course at 25 and 1 Notre Dame 2 and 1 against a head to head play against the other great four independents and of course the Irish at 17 and 7 thinking back to Sunday Rodney Strickland struggled somewhat in the first half came out and got 20 points eight of them very quickly Strickland is the thing that really stands out only three points and one assist in the first half one of three shooting wise I think you'll see him try to push himself into the offense the ball on the alternate possession as the ball to start the second half Strickland in low to common G's up off the glass and in and the ball takes the quick lead Dallas out four of eight on the night and give him nine points uh, eight sweet points move the Strickland off a screen and then Golden rolled out of the screen and set a pick for Kamaji's. Nice movement by DePaul. Rivers works by on a Royal screen and just to Donald top of the circle. Oh, they're going to Dallas. Post inside. Got Kamaji's in the air. Score it. Now let's see if they call a foul on Oh, Kamaji's they're going to count the hoop. No, it's on green. They're going to count the hoop. Hello, oh, yeah. uh, NBA continuation rule. There's the whistle. And there, oh, he got it. That's right. On the way up. Good call. Green will reach in here, watch him. They didn't call it first. I thought they called it there. Nothing. Right there's the foul on the arm. Good shot from Arnie Harris. Vos with six points. He shoots pretty good from the free throw strike. And he rolls that one in. The Irish now four of four on the game. And Vos with seven points. Almost double his average. You can see where Digger knows that this ball game evolves around Comages. He went at him early in the first half when he drew his first foul. He's going after him right away here. Fifth lead change. DePaul down by one. Comages jumper over Vos. Got it. Oh, what a touch. He's kind of developed a real soft touch this year. He gets a lot of rimmers. Ten points for Dallas. He's hit two out of two here in the second half. And DePaul back on top of the seesaw with a one-point lead. Rivers driving the baseline. Rejected by Comages. His second block shot of the game. Picks a jump pass to Stevenson. Left side up for the banker. And it peters over. Oh, no hoop. Oh, oh they're yeah. counting a basket. Apparently, oh. they were the ball hitter. I thought that both touched the ball. And the corner official said that it was uh, Comages that touched the ball. Comages, no. Comages goes after it. There goes everybody up, and ooh, Vos tipped that ball in. So who gets I think the outside official was going to call a goaltending on the Irish. So Mark Stevenson gets the basket. 34-33. Comages missed that little eight-foot jumper, and Rivers with a baseline rebound. Notre Dame with a one-point lead in the ball now. Stevenson. I always thought face burning was a foul. That time Dallas went up for the shot. Vos with a hand right over Dallas's eyes. Rivers fell down on the drive. Stevenson hits the baseline jumper. He's at two in a row now. He has 15 points on Notre Dame by three. 36 33. Nice recovery by David Rivers. Had he not fallen, it probably would have been a charge. Strickland right side. Fronted by Hicks. Goes in low to Comages. Dallas lost it on the middle, picks it back up, lays it in, no basket, traveling call. I'll tell you what, though, he's getting around Vos very easily. I think you'll continue to see DePaul go low to Comages. Vos They're walking very slowly down court like he's almost out of gas here, and we're just barely in the second half. Rivers walking it up for the Irish, Notre Dame leading 36-33, 17-48 to go. Turns the pass to Royal right around Golden on the way to the hoop and a 
shot. That'll be three on Kevin. And two quick fouls on to Paul. No, con no continuation. No, I time. guess not. He pushed him before he got rid of the ball. So a good foul by Golden, preventing the uh, sure basket for Notre Dame and the free throws as it turned out. You gotta be careful of those fouls, though. You don't want to get yourself in a bonus situation. Royal dishes off Stevenson out of the left corner. Rimmed out. Oh, one-handed grab in midair by Hicks. He tried to throw it up off the glass, and they're gonna call an undercutting foul on Terrence Green. This should be a one-shot foul. That's his second foul and the third against the ball. Oh, they're gonna give him two shots. I my understanding of the rule was you had to have control of the ball, and the way they consider control was both hands on the ball. Green out, Golden out. No argument from Joey Meyer. Laux and Brundy checking in for the ball. Kevin Golden, you see him sitting down on the bench. Got a big gouge out of his forehead. <laughs> he is uh, always around somebody's elbow. It's like he's been wrestling wild boars. <laughs> Scott Hicks at the stripe. Scotty a 63 percenter, the poorest free throw shooter in the starting five. That, one in. that caught all rim and finally dropped through. That's his third point. Now 40 out of 63 on the year. Third in by four. Way short and it's tipped right back to Hicks. He hangs, put up an off balance shot. Royal with his ninth rebound and Thomas' third foul. And DePaul with four quick fouls in early foul trouble here in the second half. And Joey wants a timeout. 17-28 to go in the ball game. Notre Dame in control right now. And DePaul in foul trouble. It's 37-33 Irish. Putting a bag of ice on the, the top of the right shoulder of Dallas Comages. He's going to stay in the game. But apparently caught an elbow coming down from one of the Irish. And now he rejoins Laux, Edwards, Brundy, and Strickland on the court while Digger still has the Irish gathered around him. We've got 17 at 28 left to go in this game, and Notre Dame on a six point run, now leading 37 33. And more importantly, the third foul called against Comages, and the fourth against DePaul already here in the second half. Notre Dame ball. There's the Irish victory on the 10th of January at the Horizon. Five point victory, although Notre Dame rallied from 10 down to take a one point lead going into the final minute. By Royal. Almost an air ball, but Hicks underneath. That's the second time Hicks has got a deflected rebound, and he rolls in his fifth point. And DePaul now trailing by six. Notre Dame now in the right place at the right time, really dominating the boards. Comedy went up for the shot, came back down with it, got it up, and muscled it in. He's got Dallas hurt his hand. He hurt his hand on that one. He has got all six to ball points here in the second half. Hurt a dozen for the game. He's got a bad, he hurt his left hand. Rivers beating the press by Brundy. Jump pass cross court. Hicks saved it. That almost sailed over his hand and right out of here. Rivers double teamed and there's a foul on Brundy and that's five against the ball. Well, they're starting to whistle a little bit quicker this half. Let him play the first half a lot more. Two against Brundy. Boy, two more fouls, and the Irish will be in a bonus, and we still got 16 and 41 to go. Only eight fouls the first half on DePaul, six on the Irish, and the officials have come out tooting a little bit more. The players got to adjust. DePaul into a zone. A little trap. And Stevenson rejected by Comedy. Dallas's third block. Nice behind the back dribble by Strickland underneath. Put it up with the left hand and roll it in. That was a tough play. He oh, had a guess. guy coming up on his right hand. Well, he had company. He Whoa. had an escort all the way up yeah. to him that time. I Very thought that would be the wrong thing to do is put it right in front of the guy. He really brought it around his back right in front of the player. 39-37 Notre Dame. Rivers to the right side. Wheel out pass to Royal. Left side board. Cross court Hicks. Well, ball hit him on the top of the noggin, but he got it back. Anybody but Landy Louch would have had that swooped <laughs> yeah. it away. Edwards or Strickland. Well, oh, they've been gone. Rivers inside. Off yeah. the glass and in. Looked like it was partially blocked from behind. Yeah, Rodney Strickland with two fouls. Got to play tougher defense than that. Got to use your body. Put it on, Rivers. Not let him penetrate. Four uh -oh. points for David. Almost Careless. Medcourt steal. Louch diving on the floor and a holding call on Rivers. Oh, they are calling him close this half. Rodney Strickland really out of the ball game now. 
not only mentally, as he has been so far here in the second half, but physically as Joey substitutes. Second foul on Rivers, the first whistle against Notre Dame here in the second half. 15.36 to go. The ball down by four, Blue Demon ball. Box open from three, lets it go. Wide open, and he swishes it. Andy is 31 of 61 from three point territory. You can't let him square up and get set. Yeah, mental lapse by Notre Dame. The ball coming in bounds. Lauk's over here all by himself for about a half a minute. Nobody looked at him. That's his specialty, but he is a set shooter. He doesn't shoot well off the move. Rivers out high to Royal. Right side, Hicks working on Lauk. Pull up jumper, got it. Hicks now with five of his seven here in the second half. Notre Dame leading by three, 43 to 40. Edwards, of course, can do it all. Small forward to point guard. Driving on uh, Rivers, a block on David. Two quick fouls on him and free for the game. Second foul on the Irish, both against Rivers here in the last 40 seconds of game play. Interesting turnaround. I, I think you may see a switch defensively because Rivers will, I mean, Edwards will take Rivers down low. Baseline right. T. Green will inbound the ball for the Blue Demons, looking for help. Out over the top to Comedies. Jump oh, pass underneath. Nice. Beautiful play. And the layup is good by Terrence Green. And the Irish chopped him on the play. But what a great assist from Dallas Comedies. One of the things that has made Dallas the complete player this year is his ability to pass. Inbounds play. They think he's shooting. We did too. And boom. There's the man that took the ball out of bounds. Somebody forgot to cover him. And he's got a shot for a three point play. T. Green now with 10. And the 67 percenter with 69 out of 103 attempts on the air. He'll be shooting into the waving arms of the Notre Dame student body. Let's see if the ball picks him up. Badly missed. DePaul one of three at the stripe. Well, Notre Dame still with a one point lead as they could have gotten the tie. DePaul with a three point play had Green have been able to make the free throw. Foul was on Hicks, by the way. And the Irish now with three quick fouls and a total of four against him in the half. They're trying to get the ball down low to Donald Royal, get him into the offense. Rivers works by Royal screen, long fall away jumper, rebound Edwards. Here comes the ball. Three on two. Edwards takes it into the middle, pull up jumper, and he missed the short jumper and a rebound by both of Notre Dame. I think if he realized he'd had David Rivers on him, he might have gone all the way to the basket. Rivers probably instinctively would have backed away. He's got three fouls. Rivers right side offensively for Notre Dame. Tries to go inside to Stevenson. Overplayed. Lox knocks the ball out of bounds with 14 minutes to go. Notre Dame maintains possession. The Irish up by one. Good hustle by Andy Lox to get around in front. Stevenson had good position. Donald Royal, the trigger man. Out over the top to Rivers. Jump pass baseline. Royal. Oh, missed an easy shot. Terrence Green with a rebound. Here comes the ball. Another chance to take the lead. Bounce pass to Edwards off the glass. Oh. And the DePaul leads by one. Anybody but Edwards and Hicks would have bothered him. Hicks a great leaper, but Edwards can get up too, up off the glass. I think one of the keys here is Edwards is now defensively on Rivers. He contains him very well and doesn't allow Rivers to create. Edwards with eight. DePaul leading 44-43. Third lead change in the second half or seventh of the game. Royal out front to Stevenson, guarded by Lauk. Helped by Edwards, not a Rivers. And he is grabbed at the free throw line. Foul on Edwards, and that's Kevin's second foul. And that's six against DePaul. I'm not so sure Edwards should come over and help Andy Lauk's on Stevenson off of Rivers. Andy had him pretty well contained. Edwards tried to help, and you can't let Rivers loose without a man on him. He's going to create some problems. Well, the Irish have DePaul on the brink of the bonus situation foul-wise here. And, of course, the Irish, uh, an excellent free-throw shooting team. Notre Dame down by one. Stevenson to Rivers. 13 minutes to go here on Notre Dame campus. So DePaul goes into a zone. Hicks baseline left. Got his man in the air and lays it in to give the Irish the lead, and that's nine for Hicks, seven in the second half. When he in foul trouble, you usually like to go into his zone, but so far the night, the Irish has picked apart DePaul's zone. One point game back and forth. T. Green gets the pass at the free throw lane. Down the right side of the paint, up and in. He's got 12. Came up for a backdoor play, got the ball, Andy Lauk's cut back door, nothing. 
He just followed Andy to the basket. Had a clear avenue. DePaul going to stay in the zone. 12 points for Terrence Green. DePaul back on the high end of the seesaw now. 46-45 Blue Demons. Terrence it's to Rivers. Terrence Green really come to life here tonight. Good comedies with 12 each to lead DePaul. 15 for Stevenson to lead at Notre Dame. Rivers works into the paint. Ball. He's surrounded and he did walk before he launched that eight foot jumper and the turnover gives it back to DePaul. The Demons leading by one. Rivers again getting away to penetrate causing problems that time. Got called for the walk. Rundy sets the pick. Edwards drives the left side, changes the trajectory of his shot, missed it, and Notre Dame knocks it out of bounds under the DePaul basket. Royal, I think. DePaul knocked it out. Royal stepped on the line as he tried to retrieve it. 11.53 to go in the game. We've got a timeout. DePaul, 46. Notre Dame, 45. Dang. And don't forget, we've got a special on the NCAA preview, Sunday, March 8th, 10 p.m., Joey Meyer and coaches from all across the country, including Jim Balvano, Digger Phelps, Speedy Morris. Watch. It'll be good. March 8th, 10 p.m. And that, of course, is the big day with the seating and the drawing of the 64 teams for the various sites. And we'll have the NCAA, and of course, that'll be part of the program. Terrence Green, baseline left, inbounds to Lauf. Ball knocked out of bounds by David Rivers. DePaul will maintain possession. Rivers overplay, three fouls. Very aggressive. I don't think he wants to draw his fourth. 11.52 to go. Bit of trouble getting the ball inbounds, and finally, Brundy sought out Kevin Edwards for the inbounds pass. Edwards underneath the Comagees, reverse twist to the baseline, and in and out, missed the eight footer from the right side. Rebound down to Royal Notre Dame. Comagees can't get it to fall as much as usual. He's getting open at will, though. Bose has had all kinds of trouble trying to stay with Dallas. Well, Dallas is much, much too quick for Bose. Notre Dame has picked off seven rebounds, though, to just a pair for DePaul here in the second half. And they let off the boards in the first half as well. There's a foul by Lauf. And that is the 17th foul on the Blue Demons. And that means with 11-17 to go in the ballgame now, Notre Dame's going to be in the one-on-one -on -one foul shooting situation. Well, one of the problems is Joey's trying to protect his team because they are in foul trouble. But I think here tonight, DePaul has drawn most of its fouls either when it's in its zone defense or on rebounds, not really in its aggressive man-to-man. -man. Donald Royal, he lives at that free throw line. He's two for two tonight, 10 points all in the first half. Shooting the one and one and he knocks it in. He's three out of three tonight. One stretch this year, he made 22 in a row. And he made 16 in a row with his career high of 26 against DePaul a couple of years ago. He was 16 out of 16. I think this is one of Joey's greatest fears. Is that Notre Dame would get into the bonus this early in the second half. They are a great free throw shooting team for a college team. And I just think this takes DePaul out of their offense, which is their aggressive defense. That's our 10th lead change. Notre Dame by one. Locks from three. Got to yank that one, and it bounced off the iron over the glass, out of bounds to the Irish. Locks one of two from three-point territory. Notre Dame by one on the ball now with 11.01 to go. Last time to Paul in zone, this time back into man-to-man. -man. Notre Dame switched to the zone defense. Royal. To Stevenson, fronted by Louts. Dumps it off to David Rivers. Long jumper, got it. He got, for six. he got a switch to Andy Lauch. Andy can't play up quite as close on Rivers. Rivers too quick for him. David just backed off and hit the 15-footer. Six for Rivers. Notre Dame, 49-46. They lead by three. Strickland off to the Paul Bench. will be back in here in a moment. T. Green tried to go inside, and the ball is kicked away by the Irish. Strickland in, replacing Andy Lauch, I believe. Yep. Green had the right idea. Had Comagee's open on the other end. Just got the ball kicked. DePaul basketball under their own basket. Right inside and a breaching foul on Scott Hicks. 
As Strickland reached for the inbounds pass, got a hitch with three. And that's four team fouls on the Irish. So Notre Dame has a couple of more to give before they put DePaul at the free throw line. Terrence Green baseline up will inbounds the ball again for the Blue Demons. They set a pick inside. Brundy chases it down. Well, DePaul really struggling trying to get the ball inbounds. Yeah. Well, Brundy fumbled at that time and then went after it. Strickland, nice inside pass. Comagies missed the shot. Rimmed out, both with a rebound. DePaul getting only one shot. Dallas a little pumped as missed. Two or three shots strong coming off the glass. Irish down a little weave they did a little bit in the first half. Rivers down the paint. Oh, should have taken the shot. But gives the Royal slam. Notre Dame by five. Well, they got the basket, but that was one point where you would have been better off probably taking the shot. Calls his second timeout. 9.41 to go. The crowd going crazy here at the AC Convocation Center in Notre Dame. The Irish lead by five. Five point edge for the Irish. Here's Rivers. He's been penetrating a lot. He had a shot here, I thought. Yeah. Decided not to take it. Gave it to Royal, who. Slammed it home and brought the crowd to life. Notre Dame out rebounding to Paul 10 to 3. This half, 28-15, almost a 2 to 1 edge for the game. Royal with 10 rebounds. Strickland left side. Off the jump, wheels it inside to Brundy who fumbled it. Comedy's got it back. Reverse left. Strickland missed it, but a foul call on Notre Dame. Is that on Rivers? Uh, let's see if it is. It's four on number four. Uh -oh. Yeah, it is. Four David Rivers, Rivers with his fourth. He signals Digger Phelps, leave me in the ball game. He did not want to come out. Digger, though, wisely. Frederick. Removes Rivers. And that spells a little bit of trouble for the Irish. Well, it has in the past, for sure, for sure. Now, let's see how the young freshman handles the pressure again. They get the ball inside. Shot is missed. Both with a rebound. Royal falls down. Travel. That was his 11th rebound that he turned it over as he lost his footing. And of course, the Irish fans wanted a foul call. That's what the quickness of the Paul will do. It'll really jump on you, cause you to turn the ball over, not necessarily get steals, but to make some mistakes you wouldn't ordinarily make. The inbounds pass to Strickland. Works inside on Hicks. Block from behind. Foul call. And that's four on Scott Hicks. So the entire Notre Dame backcourt of Hicks and Rivers in foul trouble here with 9.21 to go. Rodney Strickland does this very well, comes from behind and steals balls. Hicks trying to give him some of his own medicine, gets him on the hand. You see it. Even though the call came just a little bit late, it was still a foul, Rodney, to the line. Those two calls, nine seconds apart. Big Strickland. calls. Oh, yeah. Strickland, one of two, makes two out of three now in the game, and that gives him six points. Now you'll get a look at the student body behind the glass here. And Rock Strickland nails a pair. That gives him three out of four and seven points in the game. The ball going to apply a little heat to Diamond and one. Notre Dame leading by three. Reverse dribble right into Steven, uh, Stevenson, right into Edwards, who made the steal. Strickland, left side of the paint, scoops and scores right down the lane. Joey going to apply it again. The Diamond and one has not been applied much because the ball hasn't shot that many free throws. The two critical fouls on Rivers and Hicks put them both with a load of four and a couple of quick turnovers and four points by Strickland makes it a one point Notre Dame lead. Howdy. <laughs> Give me a light. And for Notre Dame, eight for DePaul. And DePaul has converted those uh, nine Notre Dame mistakes into ten points on turnovers, while the Irish with just four points on turnovers tonight. Rivers and Hicks back into the ball game. Hicks and Rivers with three fouls each here in the second half. Four for the game. They have all of the six personals whistled against Notre Dame here in the second half. Of course, the two turnovers from the pressure came with them out of the ball game. DePaul going to keep that intense pressure on. This is their kind of ball game. They want this run and gun. Inbound pass to Stevenson, rolls it back to Royals, almost knocked loose by Brundy. Here comes Rivers with it. 
The Irish will set up the offense. 8.55 to go. Notre Dame by one. Edwards stays on Rivers. A switch by Joey Meyer. Royal out front to Stevenson. Now you got Stevenson switched off on Strickland. Left side, Scott Hicks with it. Strickland now switches back to Rivers. But Paul sometimes gets themselves in trouble by all the switching they do. Eight seconds to go on the possession clock. The Irish getting farther and farther away. Now they get it to Royal. Who scores? No hoop. No, no hoop. There's a charge, and I think they're out of time as well. Unless they reset that clock immediately. That was right borderline, and an offensive foul has been called on Royal. Time was running out. Royal got away. Kamaji's over. Looked like Dallas. A gutty move by Dallas with three fouls had pretty good position. It's two fouls on Donald Royal now, and DePaul has a chance to regain the lead. We've had 10 late changes in this seesaw affair. DePaul was down by nine early in the ballgame. The biggest lead for the Blue Demons has been three. Strickland, change of pace, dribble. Down the right side, shoots over Terrence Green's pick. Tapped off the glass by Brundy, not control. Comedy saves to Green. Ball not close, and it's picked up by Rivers, and Brundy fouls him. Three on Brundy. Boy, it was getting wild under that basket. Boy, is it getting live. Dallas Comedy's on a nice feed to Green. Stevenson had the axe out from behind. No call was made. <laughs> So now they walk to the other end where the Irish will shoot the one and bonus. David Rivers shooting 833 on 100 out of 120. So he's made five out of every six he's attempted this year. His first try tonight, he has six points in the game, four here in the second half. Seven for Rivers, Notre Dame by a hoop, 52 to 50. A pair. Notre Dame 53, DePaul 50, 750 to go. Notre Dame in a zone. Looks like a 1-3-1, one, one, kind of. Digger wants it way back. Make DePaul shoot over. Baseline jumper Edwards partially blocked. Rundy going for the loose ball. Rebound knocked out of bounds by Mark Stevenson. It'll be DePaul basketball, 735 to go. I don't know if Edwards just lost that ball or slipped. Or really got fouled on that play, but boy, that was way short. Baseline jumper and Comedies rolls it off long to the right. Stevenson with a rebound. The Irish with a three-point lead of the ball. Irish going in that little weave they've been running. Rivers to Stevenson. Kill a little clock and try to isolate one of those three players one on one. Rivers left side can't position for the shot. Now to Royal. Ball knocked loose by Edwards. Here's picked up by Strickland. Three on two break. Rock triple. He was tripped, but he still dribbled as he fell to the court and then throws it away with a bad pass. Picks down court. Stevenson on Comedy. Missed the shot. Knocked loose underneath. Goes to Notre Dame. Well, you saw a great job of dribbling while falling down by Rod Strickland, but then he threw a bad pass. Rodney has to keep his head in the game, not get frustrated. The officials missed that one. They've done a pretty good job here tonight, this type of intensity. There's the foul, though. DePaul with three players with three. Notre Dame with the two guards with four. Hicks pumps in a 15-foot jumper. He's got nine of his 11 here in the second half, and Notre Dame leads by five, 55-50. Big basket there, six and a half minutes to go, and the crowd going crazy. Terrence Green inside, brings it in the corner, now to Strickland underneath, lays it in. Digger wanting him to suck that zone way back into the paint, but DePaul penetrates. 11 points for Rod Strickland, a three-point Notre Dame lead at 55-52. Irish look tired. Well, they've played a little more up-tempo tonight than they normally do. Probably are. 
Stevenson out front. Donald Royal, 5.55 and counting. Now to Rivers. Tries to get inside Edwards. First time Bose has handled the ball in a while. Royal starts his move on Brundy. We got a foul on Stanley, his fourth. And Royal will shoot the one in bonus again. Notre Dame leading by three, and Royal four out of four tonight. Irish just killing some clock with that weave, and then isolate either Stevenson, Royal, or Hicks one-on-one -on -one or Rivers, and Brundy's got to realize Royal's a right-hander and try to force him left. Of course, Royal awful quick. Nice move to the basket. Donald Royal with 14 points, four out of four at the strike tonight. Senior three-year letterman co-captain from St. Augustine High School from New Orleans. He has 11 rebounds to top both clubs. And Royal now with 15 points. His average is 14-7. He leads Notre Dame in rebounding and scoring. Average. Although Rivers has the highest total number of points. Royal missed those four games early this year with that torn calf muscle sustained late in the Indiana game. One of the few the Irish lost here at South Bend. A five-point loss to the Hoosiers after Royal went out. Six out of six for Donald Royal. Notre Dame by five again. 57-52 Irish. 5.40 to go. Strickland out front for the Blue Demons. Terrence Green on the right wing. Now to Edwards. Kevin. Brundy underneath. Ball slapped loose out of bounds to Notre Dame. Kind of tough to put the ball on the floor against the zone defense, especially when you get it down low like that. Brundy, wow, Joey right. Meyer. Brundy, Joey Meyer called a timeout, and that's his third, according to our book, which means he has only one left. And we still got 527 to be played. Digger has called one tonight. He would have three remaining. So Joey Meyer and Jim Molinari, his top lieutenant, talking things over here before they talk to the Blue Demons. I'm not so sure they knew that on the bench. Three to get it in. Obviously, felt it very important to call that timeout. With only one remaining, he's got to be very careful when he takes it. He just wanted his team to get the ball down low to Kamajis. They've kind of forgotten about him of late. He's going to, if he scores, he's going to put some pressure on. This is our 17th and final telecast of the Blue Demon basketball game this year. Of course, we'd like to wish DePaul and their fine basketball team all the best of luck in the upcoming NCAA. We'll have two more telecasts left featuring the Irish. The next one here on March 5th, a Thursday night, 6.30 start time from Chicago. We'll get a look at Tito Horford and the Miami Hurricane against Notre Dame here in South Bend. Kamaji's inside, and it hung on the rim and fell in. Woo the diamond and one now. He's going to do it after field goals. Rarely does this. 14 for Kamaji's, and you called it. They went right inside to him. Notre Dame by three, five minutes to play. Stevenson to Royal. Digger knows the fewer transitions there are in the ball game, the better chance they have to keep the lead. Gonna waste a little clock. Rivers inside Edwards. Pull up jumper. Oh, tipped in and out by Royal. I thought the ball might go in. Almost a fifth foul on Rivers as he bumped into Strickland, but no call was made. T. Green just inside three point territory, threw up a brick. Rivers loose on the floor, tied up by Brundy, and then the alternate possession, it'll go to Notre Dame. Well, Rivers may have gotten away with one there, and then a bad shot put up by T. Green from out front, which is normally about three or four feet outside his range. Yeah, you're right. It was a quick shot, showing they may be a little bit nervous. They got to work the ball. A lot of time left in this ball game. And I agree with you, Rivers may have gotten away with a foul. But again, that was a ticky tacky foul. And if you're an official, you kind of hate to put a guy of his caliber out of the game on a foul like that. 
Royal double teamed as DePaul's going to chase the ball now. Rivers out front, 425 to go. DePaul down by three. Royal set the pick. Rivers off balance. Davis to Hicks. Now they give it out back to David. Beats Edwards inside. Oh, he was coming down. He gives it to Bosa and missed the layup. He would have walked and had to dump it off to somebody. Here comes DePaul on a 3-1 break. Strickland around his man. Backhanded off the glass and in. A one point. Notre Dame late at 57-56 now. I think Vos is really tired. He's tried to cover common G's all night, and he's done a pretty good job. Dallas wearing him down. He just lost his concentration on that shot. 13 for, Dave, for uh, Rod Strickland. Eight here in the last six minutes of play. David Rivers gives off to Vos. Notre Dame with a one point lead trying to protect the ball here with 3.40 to go. Royal. Left side to Bos. Rivers passed up the 17 foot jumper. 13 on the shot clock. They got to try to get into something here. Close to Rivers. He'll take the shot around Terrence Green and he goes baseline. Can't get it. Gets his own rebound back. Block. By Comedy's goaltending, Rivers gets the basket. Notre Dame leads by three, 59 56. When you penetrate, you cause a lot of breakdowns. Green got shifted off on Rivers. You see four demons going to Rivers. That leaves an avenue for three Irish on the board. Rivers gets his own rebound. Dallas call for the goaltending. D. Green pass in the lane. Edwards pull up jumper, short off the rim, tipped up, grabbed by Strickland, and he missed the layup right underneath. Edwards with a big rebound. Or rather, Strick Rivers away from Edwards. Right side, slam, jam, Rivers to Royal, and the basket bouncing in the air to Royal, slam, jam, and he was fouled on the play. Oh. If it's on Grundy, it's five. Very seldom to the Irish break. David Rivers, a little Harlem Gold Trotter move, and a very nice three on two fast break. Grundy fouls out with four points. I don't think I've seen a basket bounce like that after a stuff all year. Royal now with 18, a great feed by Rivers to Royal. John, we've seen Notre Dame play some pretty good basketball this year, but I think this is their finest performance on Channel 9. Well, they're, they're mixing a little bit of that upbeat, fast break type offense in that David Rivers, everybody knows he likes to play with a little bit of control offense, and you're right, they've controlled the tempo for most of this ball game. Free throw down the wall, misses. Rebound, Kevin Golden. Well, Royal have made six in a row. Here comes Strickland on the break. Rivers had to let him go, and Rod quickly gets to Paul back in the game. What is uh, 15th point, and that's Joey's final timeout. Why did they? I can't believe that. Well, that comes with 2.47 to go. I think that was a mistake. I, Joey may have said if the ball game gets down toward the end that you might want to call timeout so we can arrange our defenses. Boy, with 2.47 to go. Digger has three timeouts left. Joey none. That puts Digger in a very, very advantageous situation. They're checking right now the score table, and uh, they're just confirming what we've told you. This is where you have to have some leaders on the floor. Comagees and Strickland must take over as coaches somewhat because Joey has no more time to really bring his team over unless Digger calls another timeout. I can guarantee you, if Digger keeps the lead, he's not going to allow Joey that opportunity. 
Well, that was a surprising move for Joy to use up his timeouts like that. Rivers beats the press. Common, he's the only man back. Rivers takes it to the best and scores. takes it right to Comagies. 12 points for David Rivers. Notre Dame by five. Inside, Comagies missed the shot. Golden missed the tip. Royal with the rebound. He's got a dozen. Notre Dame by five, and they're going to set on it now with 2.18 to go. Person, Karen Phelps a little bit excited right now. <laughs> I can't blame her. No, there the Paul wants a five-second call, but Golden, I don't believe, was close enough to even consider guarding Royal. Stevenson in trouble off the rivers open, fires a long jumper. There was a bad shot. And the rebound taken away by Royal, his 13th. He has been all over the floor. And Strickland fouled him on the play. Donald Royal would be the MVP tonight. He has 18 points and 13 rebounds. Well, his career high in scoring against DePaul. Andy Lopps checks in for Kevin Golden. Joey going with some outside shooting power now. He's down by five with 140 to go. the line. Royal hits this one, puts the lead to seven. Develops some serious problems for DePaul. They'll oh, have to foul. They're in serious trouble right now. What a game for Donna Royal. 65 58 Strickland off the dribble three point shot air ball from Terrence Green from the left corner Stevenson on the rebound Edwards tried to save it Strickland got it scoops it off the glass not there Comagee slam jam 16 points for Dallas Comagee's 65 60 Notre Dame to Paul they can't force the turnover. They're going to have to foul. They got Rivers double teamed in the backcourt. How about the 10 second call? No, no. Rivers just beat the clock by one second. Good hands by Comagies. Bad pass stolen by Comagies. Lox. Strickland drives. Cooks. Oh. Joey is irate. They call the charge, and Joey Meyer is absolutely beside himself. No basket. And there's the straw that broke the camel's back, I believe. There's Strickland going to the hoop. Looks like Hicks was pretty well set. Let's get another angle. Tough to call. The referee has an entirely different angle than we have. Strickland, nice maneuver to try to get out of the way. Tough call, regardless of where you're at. Hicks double team in midcourt, fouled by Comages. That's four on Dallas. The ball in a must foul situation here. 49 seconds to go. But you're Notre right. Dame leading 65 60. And it's going to be a minor miracle now needed by the Paul if they're going to avoid their second loss of the year. And for Digger, it would be a, another big notch in that home court gun that he's got this year. It'd be another top five team, top 20 team going down to defeat to the Irish. Hicks with 12. And Notre Dame putting this one on ice. Again, I think this is a big free throw because it makes the spread seven, which is three transitions. It's all over but the shouting, folks. Notre Dame's going to go to 18 and seven with another upset win over a top ranked team here in South Bend. Strickland missed a three point try. Royals 14th rebound of the game. And he fouled. It's all over, but the shouting, Notre Dame leading by seven. Royal with 
20 points, 8 of 9 at the free throw strike, 14 rebounds. And he's up there now to try to put the icing on the victory cake for his coach, Digger Fowles. You think Royal's going to make somebody a nice weak side forward the NBA? Oh, yeah. Well, aggressive, very quick to the ball. It's his greatest asset as far as the rebounder goes. 21 for Royal. 22. 10 of 11 from the strike. Ball Notre Dame. 69 60 Irish, 35 seconds to go. T. Green, three point shot. A brick off the glass. Long rebound to Hicks. Here come the Irish, leading by nine. Less than a half minute to go. Stevenson. Rivers dancing away. Foul on the dribble. It'll be interesting to see what kind of a seed Notre Dame is going to get. Now they'll play at Marquette. They have Brooklyn and Miami of Florida here, and then they wind up at Dayton in a game that we'll televise on Channel 9. So we'll see the Irish the final two games of the year on the 5th and the 7th of March. Notre Dame will win 21 or 2, probably going into the tournament. David Rivers with 20 seconds to go. Notre Dame with one on the victory column. They have a 10 point lead. 13 for Rivers. Notre Dame has done a nice job really controlling the Helter Skelter press of the ball here in the late time and really putting down those free throws. We said that would be important. 18 of 20 for the Irish at the stripe. 19 of 21. You don't expect him to miss. 14 for Rivers. He got his average. He's four out of four at the stripe. Notre Dame with an 11 point lead. DePaul's nine game string about to end. Strickland just takes it all the way under and lays it in. 17 for Rod. A courtesy basket, if you will. Here comes Hicks on the breakaway. Terrence Green back. Hicks scoops and scores. The Irish by 11. Edwards fires from the backcourt. And Notre Dame upsets DePaul 73 to 62. The fourth ranked Blue Demons drop the 25 and 2 on the year. And Notre Dame gets a split with their big four independent rival this year. Digger is now 10 and 10, lifetime against DePaul. He's walking over to his sixth man. Digger loves that student body. And he salutes him. Well, the Irish have won five in a row, including some pretty impressive victories, and they have knocked off North Carolina, Duke, and DePaul, all here at Notre Dame, Indiana. Our final score, Notre Dame 73, DePaul 62. Well, we said that in a pregame show. I thought that if, if we could just control the transition, which we did do a good job early in the game, but I felt we can go at them, and I felt that we're going to get on a foul line at the end of the game. We made those foul sets when they counted. You got DePaul in foul trouble early, and then all of a sudden, Hicks and Rivers came up with four pieces. At that point, it looked like you were about to lose your momentum. Well, you live with them at the end. We went to a zone. We got away with a zone. I thought we did a good job of not losing our composure, even when I took David out. Uh, we turned the ball over. We called timeout, put David back in, and that was it. That was what we had to do, and you gamble then when you have the foul trouble by going zone. A tremendous game for Donald Royal, who has played well his entire career against DePaul. He's had an unbelievable career here at Notre Dame. It's uh, one of those things that he's just improved every year. He's got a lot of confidence. He, he's got the quickness to shoot it outside. He's not afraid to post up, and obviously he's a big rebounder. Thank you very much, Digger. My pleasure. Digger Phelps, the winning coach tonight, as DePaul is upset by Notre Dame, 73 to 62, 22 points and 14 rebounds for Donald Royal. The Irish did the job off the glass. Yep, Digger said it all. There's not much <laughs> left for me to say. All right, that's it from Notre Dame, Indiana.